Researchers confirmed what people kind of already knew, and that is that horses can smell fear. Yes, horses, much like dogs, can literally smell if you are afraid. Now, this is one that I was sure was just not real, kind of like not turning on the dome lights in the car, which I guess is a universal experience. Your parents told you it was illegal. It's not. We have about 5 million olfactory receptors in our heads, and dogs have about 220 million. It's why they can do jobs like sniffing out cancer or people under the rubble. They're actually really good about that, and fortunately for us, they're domesticated and they want to. Cats can probably do the same, but they don't. But back to horses. Researchers actually had people sit and watch Sinister while taking sweat from them. I mean, it's not the scariest thing around. They should have had me sit and watch it because the horses wouldn't get a whiff. I love horror movies. But I also like poorly made science diagrams. It's not really poorly made, it just doesn't look like a horse. They put sweaty cotton swabs into the horse's muzzle and they got really agitated, but only if that person had been watching a horror movie. You would think that putting a cotton swab muzzle on them would make them agitated to begin with, but yeah, more agitated. So what does this teach us? That I guess animals in general are a lot more in tune with your feelings than you might expect. I'm also curious why horses would have the ability to smell our fear to begin with. I mean, they do live in herds and they have some kind of social hierarchy, so Perhaps this was adapted for understanding each other's emotions and then just got turned into understanding people's emotions. Now, we did domesticate horses roughly 5,000 years ago and dogs potentially as far back as 10,000 years ago or more, and dogs have significantly evolved to communicate with us. Now, if you needed some good equian news, Shawalski's horses, yes, that's a word that no one can say properly, including myself. They cloned one. Horse cloning, of course, mostly happening for the rodeo, because the rodeo does not discriminate against cloned horses as players, like the Kentucky Derby does, and for good reason, but I have a video just on that. Now Shawalski's horses are considered to be the only true wild horse, but that is no longer true, because genetic evidence found that they were once domesticated and then got loose and went feral. I will also argue this with my zoology colleagues, because I don't think they're a true horse. They have a different number of chromosomes than regular horses and therefore cannot interbreed successfully, but they did branch off somewhere in the ballpark of 130,000 years ago, so really they would be a subspecies, but I don't buy that, just based on genetic similarity that does not make a species that cannot interbreed, therefore not the same species, but I'll argue it all day. Turns out they also used to have a leopard spot gene, but it was not advantageous and it ended up leaving the population so we have the orange horses that we know today. And of course they are pretty famous for hanging out in the Chernobyl exclusion zone because humans are apparently worse than nuclear fallout for animals on this planet. Was this useful? Absolutely not, but I hope you enjoyed it. Follow for more.